Hello there, Managing Broker for the Eastside Real Estate Team. This is Dan Edwards with your market review for April 2018, where we tell you the inside news on what's going on in the housing market here in King County and the uh, greater Eastside. So let's first start by a overview of what's going on from a national level and how that will uh, play out um, and what it means for you, the home buyer, home seller, or the home owner in Seattle or the greater east side. Let's take a look. First and foremost, uh, we're bringing up this slide here from the uh, year over year appreciation. The actual price change in Washington state was 12.5. We led the country and we know that the Seattle area with its um, booming economy is leading the charge. And basically in our area, we've seen double digit almost towards the 20s in some areas like Bothell, and uh, um, somewhere between 12 and 18 percent year-over-year appreciation um, certainly is a something to pay attention to but here is the real cause of all this rampant appreciation it's the low inventory so you can see month over month available inventory over the last 12 months this is across the nation is low and uh, we'll look at our local numbers here shortly that will re, uh, reintroduce that uh, fact as well so let's start then by the King County numbers. So just starting at the top, King County in April showed a median home price of $650,000. That's up 18.18%. 18 .18%. That's an interesting number. 18.18% from uh, the same time, April of 2017. Total inventory is up uh, uh, to 2,591. That was the total available homes at uh, for sale in April, up 13%. Pending sales were down just about 1%. And let's see, next up, closed sales. Closed sales were up 4.97%. So total inventory was up, which is good, but total sales were also up. But it is nice to see that the, uh, the percentage outpacing was uh, by about, not quite 9%. And right now we're currently sitting in King County, total months of inventory of 0.94, meaning that if there are no new homes hitting the market, we will be out of available homes for sale in less than a month. All right, let's look at the east side. So the east side median home price is 835,500. Now that is up 11.56% over the median price from last April. We do show that new inventory was at 1,299 new homes that came on the market. The total inventory was 874, up 17%. So that's a good sign too. We're seeing a little more homes coming into the market uh, at the right time, of course. Pending sales were down 6.92% in April, and closed sales were up uh, 904 closed sales. That was a 9.18% increase over last year. To, uh, current months of inventory, 0.97. So again, less than a month of available homes on the east side. So let's take a look at April home sales, Bellevue, Kirkland, Redmond, and Issaquah, some east side communities. You can see over the last uh, three years, each uh, month has shown a reduction of available homes for sale. Uh, April, um, over uh, month over month for Bellevue, Kirkland, Redmond, and Issaquah. Median sales price you'll see is up consistently. Bellevue showed a 14, uh, excuse me, 167 percent increase, whereas uh, Issaquah, or excuse me, uh, Redmond was an 11.7 percent increase. Both are really great numbers. Uh, it looks like Kirkland led the charge with an 18.4 percent increase in median sale price in April. So. The market is heating up, and this is the market action index, which basically uh, takes all the pendings from pending to sold, uh, so, uh, non-active to active, pending to sold, and sold to closed. Essentially, every one is a data point. And you're seeing across the board here the uh, increase of the seasonality. So essentially, we are up at the top of the market activity here in May, and it'll continue to grow. So this will actually probably go higher than last year market activity because we have such a, uh, a low demand. Now, the biggest concern that most people face is uh, with, if you look in 2006, we had a similar run up and then a, a serious crash in 2008 and 9. 
nationwide. And uh, so most buyers have a concern right now buying in this marketplace. One of the things that is important to understand is historic appreciation is normally about 3 to 4% um, across the board. And uh, it's been that way going back to the 1950s. So what happened in 2005 and 6 was uh, an availability of credit that doesn't exist today. And I'll show you another slide uh, that matches that. But when you look, when you overlay historic appreciation over the top of this chart, what you're going to see is you're going to see that we're actually still below where we would normally be if we didn't have the rampant appreciation back in 2003 through 2006. So essentially, we're kind of reverting to the mean. And uh, again, here is the major reason why we ran into such a big issue in 20, uh, 2006. Essentially, it was pretty easy. All you had to do was fog a mirror to get a loan in 2006. So because of that, it drove a lot of home buyers into the market, reduced the inventory. So our current reduction in inventory is a simple supply and demand. There's just not enough homes. It has nothing to do with a, a bunch of buyers in the market, while there are. Um, but essentially, all of those buyers that are currently in the market today can qualify for a loan. And essentially, they're keeping the restrictions on obtaining a loan still pretty low. So um, if, you know, I can kind of go a little deeper into that on a one-on-one. -on -one. If you have more detailed questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Now, one of the things that is a concern as well going forward for home buyers and home sellers, because it will have an effect on demand, is the interest rate. Now, currently I showed an interest rate on bankrate.com, somewhere around four and a half percent. I do not watch these daily. I do not pay close attention to them. If you wanna do that, um, it's probably best to speak to somebody like a mortgage planner. We've got several uh, preferred lenders we can introduce you to, and we're happy to do so. But I wanna show you the effect of interest rate on somebody's purchasing power. So essentially, if you have a fixed income and you have a certain amount of money coming in, then you're going to have a, a what's called debt to in, uh, income ratio and a mortgage to income ratio. And the mortgage to income ratio is kind of your budget. That's what you can afford. So if you look at this analogy here, if you um, are currently sitting at today's uh, rate, maybe it's a four, let's just say you're, you're able to get 3.75 and your monthly payment is 41.68. If the rate goes up just a quarter percentage point, your purchasing power diminishes by 2.5% of the purchase price. So you can see and read this chart that the, the higher the rate, the more significant the reduction in purchasing power. So uh, where, do, where, do both, where do folks believe we're going to be as far as interest rates are concerned? I think you're going to see us somewhere between 4 or 4.5%. Four uh, maybe 4.75, depending on the uh, volatility and depending on the strength of the stock market. So um, I've got a chart that is out of sequence here, but I'm going to explain it to you anyways. Essentially, the, uh, uh, the next chart here is kind of where everybody suspects we'll be. And right now we're right at about the 4.5% and we're in quarter two. So that's about right with uh, where they suspect it to be. Q3 could be a little bit higher and Q4 could be a little bit higher, but we should stay below that 4.75 uh, providing. So now let me just go back to the other slide because the, the key here is where we think home values are going to go. So essentially, if we take the most aggressive uh, folks and we take the, uh, the bulls and the bears and we kind of break them down, but most people feel like we're going to be heading into the four and a half anywhere from three to 6% appreciation over the next year. So three to 6% appreciation is pretty good. And obviously if you're just planning a couple of years of uh, owning a home, that should in the emergency that you have to sell a home, that should cover it. All right, we're gonna scoot past that. All right, so that was a really quick synopsis of the current market. I think the bottom line is this. If you're a buyer in this market, you need to be readily qualified, you need to have some liquid assets available. If you're on the lower end, below the median home price, you're gonna need to be aggressive in your ability to uh, offer on a property. And it requires you to probably waive a, quite a few contingencies. Now, if you're a seller, it doesn't mean everything's hunky-dory, just put a price and people will show up. As a matter of fact, we're finding in the higher price points, in the uh, million and a half plus, a little bit more of a buyer's market, meaning 
that the buyers at the very top have a discretionary spend. So they don't have to go out and buy a home. So they're uh, being a little bit more discerning. So uh, the bottom line is that is the report. It looks like for April anyways, there was an increase of inventory. Let's see what um, May looks like with regards to that increase in inventory. Does it continue or do we just go back to the same old buyers overpowering the market, scooping up everything off the market and making it a challenge for future buyers? Um, if you have more questions and you want a little bit more detailed analysis on how this applies to you, feel free to reach out to the Eastside Real Estate Team. I'm Dan Edwards, Managing Broker. Thanks for watching.